So here I'd like to discuss one more concept. In algebra geometric correspondence, that are not often that is not often discussed in uh, presentations because uh, it comes from so-called classical mathematics, and we are actually moving just a bit to quantum mathematics or to semi-classical mathematics. And uh, while in classical mathematics you are mostly interested in functions in uh, semi-classical mathematics as you may know from from mechanics in particular functions are associated to so-called flows on the phase space and this thing namely unification of the notion of observable that is a function and dynamic that is a vector field so this unification becomes clear in quantum mechanics in quantum mechanics there is no difference there is a difference in uh, classical mechanics however all this physics i'll discuss on the physics hall. Here I just want to say that, believe me, it is important to discuss derivations. So suppose we have a smooth manifold we will consider smooth manifold as a prototype for algebra geometric constructions and uh, suppose we have v vector field so having a function and having a vector field we can define a map f going to lv of f so this is the lead derivative In coordinates, it's something like this. If you look at this definition, you will see that this definition is purely geometrical. You need to imagine smooth manifold X and the vector field. It means that to each point you have at a tangent factor, okay? And if a manifold has singularities, or if manifold is a scheme, like double point, triple point, you may think that uh, this notion of vector field has no generalization, okay? However, let us consider this ge geometrical notion algebraically. So what do we have? We have a map from the algebra to itself that I'll call D. With the property that D of A times B equals DA times b plus a times db so this is called the leibniz rule i'd like to remind you that it was called leibniz rule 
not because it was disco discovered by Leibniz. Actually, Leibniz has had the wrong idea. Originally, Leibniz thought that DAB, okay, originally, is DA times DB. So you may think, how, how could it be that such a great scientist could make such a mistake? But he actually did. It was Newton who told him that the actual formula is like this. Then Leibniz was impressed and started to tell everybody that this is not right. This is right. And since he was uh, promoting this idea, everybody else knew it from him and called it a Leibniz rule. From, his, from this, we have a lesson. If you are making mistakes, if you are corrected, but if you rethink your mistakes, and explain to everybody what is the proper thing, you will help a lot to people and also to your own career because people know it as Leibniz. Okay, so after this history, let us see. LV is described algebraically. Look, what we have here, here is purely algebraic definition. So that's what we are looking for. We are looking for replacement of geometry. So these things are called D are derivations. So let me tell you a story. It happened 45 years ago. So when I was 14, we had a special uh, class on advanced mathematics at school. And uh, I had a teacher called Igor Gurvich. Who was actually not a teacher. He was so-called Atkaznik. He was a Jew that tried to immigrate from uh, Russia, but uh, he was not allowed to emigrate. So he lost his job. So he came to our school as a part-time teacher. And uh, he was teaching us advanced mathematics. So when he told us, look, what you think analysis is, is not a real thing. I will tell you a real thing. And he says that analysis is this. And at that time, when I was 14, I thought, oh, this is deep. I'm not ready to evaluate it. I was 14. But I feel that it is deep. Dear Igor Tomovich Gurich, I thought, at some moment, I understand it. And actually, after thinking about it like 40 plus years, I realized that he was right. He put the wrong thing in my mind at a very early age. I had something to think about. And uh, now I am grateful. I cannot find him. I want to say him, thank you very much for uh, bringing me a good taste of mathematics. By the way, in these talks, I am also trying to do similar things. 
I'm trying to give you the good taste of mathematics and physics. To, to, to my best. So, so these are derivations. So let us make immediate exercise. What derivations are? Consider the scheme. So it's my favorite scheme. It's a double point. And let us compute derivations for this scheme. It's an exercise. And the making simplest exercise is, of course, a part of my uh, task. So what is D? First of all, let us check that D of one is always zero. How can I prove it? So, sorry, D not a double point, but two points. At the moment, two points, but of course I'll consider later ah, double point. Sorry. Mm, let me tell you, it's a good question. In singularity theory, people consider singularity as the main thing. And when points go, go away, they consider it as a resolution of the singularity. So they consider the A equals zero the main thing. They're not afraid to go to singularity because singularity is a place where you, I'm telling you some philosophical thing. Singularity is a place where you have a new phenomena, where everything is concentrated. All deep things are there at singularity and not in, and not in the resolution. Okay, so let us compute this. Please help me. Let me compute D of one times one. It's of course D of one. Then let us apply the Leibniz rule. It is D of one times one plus one times D of one. It is what? Well, zero plus zero. No, no, we don't know that it's a zero. It's how I'm going to prove it. Ah, well, then it's two times the d of one. Yes. So we see that d of one equals to two times d of one. So that's why d of one is zero. Hmm? And here I can use any constant. Because when I say a map, of course I mean, sorry, I need to say linear map. Okay, this is our first result on derivations. Now, in this example, we need to compute d of x. Of course, okay, because x squared is equivalent to a squared to a constant. So, so derivations are determined by this d of x. Okay. What can we say about, about d of x? Let us compute d of x squared. This is. This should be D 
of a square, this should be zero. At the same time, so this, this seems to be x times d of x, right? Two times x times d of x. So now let us consider two cases separately. Case one, a non-equal to zero. So what can we expect? What d of x could be? It could be alpha plus beta of x, right? Let us substitute. We don't know this alpha and beta yet. And we will get that zero should be equal to two x times alpha plus beta of x. So what can we conclude? It is two alpha x plus two beta x squared. Let us analyze, could it be equal to zero? Equivalent to zero. Let us simplify. So x squared seems to be a squared. And this is and this equals to zero only if alpha is zero and beta is zero. And you would say, oh, why should I do this calculation? It was obvious. These things are two points. What kind of vector fields can I have on points? Point is a manifold. Point is a smooth manifold. And of course, there are no vector fields. So we are not surprising that when A is not equal to zero, there are, there are no derivations. Now, consider the case when A equals to zero. Then the second term disappears. And the only condition is alpha equals to zero. Great. So we conclude that all derivations have this form. We computed in real time the space of all derivations. They are not empty. So this space is not empty. So now we get some extra information about, in this case, this double point. It has derivations. And then you may start to think, oh, if it has derivations, if it has vector fields, it means that it, that it could have dynamics, okay? And you may start to think along these lines. But this uh, would be useful after we will get some ideas from the physics home. At the moment, being mathematicians, we just 
note that we have this interesting phenomenon. Now, let us play around this example. Consider interesting thing. C of X and we quotient by ideal generated by X to the N. So you may guess what derivations are. So may I ask you to guess? Or oh, you see, Tim, may I ask you, you see, since you are the only one who represents West in this audience, and we don't have Yuan Yin among us. She mostly asks questions. So now I think it's time for you to ask questions. May I ask you to do this? Mm -hmm. So may I address my questions to you? Sure, I guess. Yes, so you see, because it means some special involvement, okay? So if you, if you allow me, so I'll, of course, I'll address to everybody. So everybody are welcome to answer questions, but I'll wait answer at least uh, from team, okay? So please make a guess like Leibniz did. What could be derivations here? Just a guess. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I need to tell you some extra hint. If you have a derivations, you may check that they enjoy the following property geometrically. Suppose we have a vector field. you can multiply it by a function. It would be another vector field. It is clear. Now algebraic. F of D. I consider composition. Multiplication by a function, okay? Element of the algebra, C times D. Claim, it is also a derivation. So let us check it. C, D. Apply, apply to A times B is C D of A times B plus C A D B. And now, here we use commutativity, by the way, that we can interchange C and A. It is CDA times B plus A CDB. You see from this calculation, we see that derivations form a module. over A.
You see, it would help us in order to check if we get enough, uh, enough derivations. Whenever we have derivations, we can multiply it by an element of algebra and get a new derivation. So after this, let me ask, could you guess what are derivations of this scheme? I, I want you to give a wild guess, just to check your intuition. It could be wrong, but the first thing that comes to your mind. Maybe by analogy with the last case, uh, the last example, uh, we'll have d of x uh, to the n equal uh, to zero and it, all the Ah, and d of x would be would be what? Just you see, if you make a mistake, it would help me, because uh, because you will show me. Uh, how the normal people think people think about it because I'm kind of a specialist and I actually forgot how normal people are thinking about it okay it is hard it is a bit hard for me to understand what is easy and what is not easy I'm sorry So maybe somebody from the audience would give me, please pick up some derivation and we will see. You don't need to, to bring all of them. Give me at least one. Uh, the, the same answer as, as before. Okay, d of x is x. So let, let us check, okay. It's, it's important to publish first. So now let us check. D applied to the X to the power to the, to the power P is what? Is of course X to the power P minus one P D of X. So conjecture and with some coefficient. If P X to the power P. So, so how should we check that it is a derivation? We, we would like to apply it to the product. But then you may say that this check goes exactly as in the case where uh, there is no uh, factorization. So it's really a derivation. Now, what is important? It's important that derivation should keep the factorization condition. Namely, d of x to the n should be equal to zero.
So in this case, it is true, because if we put here n, we get n here, and the x to the n is equivalent to n. Okay. So okay. Do, don't hang published first. Do we have at least one? Do we have other candidates? Well, beta of x, beta times x would also work. Okay, you know, well, it's clear that you can multiply by beta. Yes, but it's a trivial. I think it's up to uh, to the degree uh, n minus one. Ah. From uh, from degree one to n minus one, all the coefficient can uh, is free. Of course, and of course, as you see, yes. So you may check that it is actually a derivation. Now, but, but how is it li linear? It, it is uh, C linear, it's a derivation. So D, it is linear. It is application of D on X. When I know D on X, I know D on anything. Because if d of x is this, then d of x squared is 2x d of x. And then I plug it, plug this thing here. But, but shouldn't like d of 2x be equal to 2 times d of x? It, 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 I mean this sort of linearity. Of course, it's written linear map, of course. When I say D of X equals beta of X, it's what you think as a vector field. In the smooth language, you may say, let X be a coordinate. Let me take derivative along this coordinate multiplied by X and beta. And this is a vector field. You can say this for the smooth manifold. For the case of non-smooth manifold, there is no such thing as a d of x, d over dx. No. d of x equals beta is not a derivation. Let me explain you why. Because d of x to the power n, let me see, of n is zero, because x to the n, it's equivalent to zero, yes? From the Leibniz rule, it is n, x to the n minus one times d of x. Just imagine that d of x is beta. Then we will see that n times beta times x n minus one, should belong to the ideal generated by x to the n. So it should be polynomial that starts with x to the n. n capital is not zero. This does not belong to this ideal. So beta has to be zero.
But if we try to think what d or dx would be, we would say that it is something that takes x to 1. But it is not a derivation. So such thing does not exist on skin. Hmm? Interesting. However, there are a lot of derivations. Scheme does not have a coordinate that we used to have in uh, in smooth geometry. However, it has derivations. And they form a finite dimensional space. Space of derivations. I'm sorry, but I still don't quite get it. Uh, how is a uh, d of x equal to a polynomial in x a linear function? Uh, if I if I put two x as the argument, it's not going to be equal to two times. If, 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 if you put you see, I assume this the d applied to two x would be two two everywhere. It's a linear function. You consider this x as a element of the linear space. So the algebra is, first of all, algebra is a linear space equipped with a huh, I get it. authoritative right. cumulative yeah. multiplication. So, so when I say linear map, you see there is a notion, the so-called field linear and a linear. So D of A B does not equal to A D of B. So would this happen? We would call it a linearity. So you can multiply, but uh, we do not demand this. Derivations are different things. They are governed by the Leibniz rule. And it is quite a deep, and this is quite a deep statement that we know what the vector fields are, while vector fields are not made out of vectors, if you wish. It's not that you have a family of vectors attached to points. It is something else. It's a new phenomenon. That's why we are discussing it. Moreover, in the case that we consider, derivations do not form a free module. Do you know what the free module is? Free module over algebra. Okay, let me remind you that module over the algebra A is a vector is a is a linear space. So elements from this I will call A, and elements from this I will call M, such that A 
could act on M. And this action is denoted, so pair A and M goes to what people used to call A at M. With an extra condition that A1, A2 applied to M, is A1 times A2 applied to M. So this is a version of associativity. I don't know how people are teaching linear algebra in China, but uh, in Russia, people decided that engineers and physicists should not know what the module is. They only teach uh, linear spaces over fields. And they don't teach linear spaces over uh, commutative algebras. Actually, they decided that uh, engineers and physicists should not know what commutative algebra is in general. And uh, it is a gap in Russian education. So may I ask, Sam, Sam, may I ask you? No. Sam. Yes. Sam, do you teach as the first course what the module is over commutative algebra in China? Uh, um, no. And uh, so we uh, try to to teach this as a representation theory. Yes, uh, but I mean at the very beginning. Okay. Uh, yes. So, but after abstract algebra. So my uh, position is that uh, it is better to teach it as the very as the very beginning. Right. Because later, because later on. It's a fundamental notion. By the way, do you know why module is called module? Oh. Uh, no, not really. Yes. So uh, the, the definition of the name module, very strange. Where do you see module here? Um, it, it was introduced by Dedekind. And he was kind in the rush. And uh, actually, actually, he what he studied, he studied Z over PZ, okay, residues. It was a ring. And uh, in this ring, I mean numbers module IP. <laughs> People understand that you can compare and, I, and identify things that differ by uh, some number of, of P's, okay? And then he looked for an analog of the vector space. So he looked for an object such that, you, that this could act on it. It was the Dekind. And uh, he had no idea how to call it. And uh, and you see, modulus originally from Latin means comparable. So he kept in mind that here, N is comparable with M plus P. So he uses being comparable in numbers, but he was looking 
for something being comparable in some abstract things that he was inventing. So, uh, so he came to this notion of modules, mean comparable, means that uh, if you multiply it by a relation, you will still get a relation. So it's very bad name. But uh, after the decant, nobody renamed it. So please excuse this great mathematician for not giving a good name. So all students, when they come to modulus, ask why this object is called modulus. So it is actually a bad naming, OK? So this is a so 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 this is a modulus or moduli. Okay. Now, so elements of the moduli could be acted upon by elements of the algebra. Now. If you have an algebra A, you can easily get a modulus that, that is called the free modulus, like A times E1 plus A times E2 plus etc. A times EK. It is something that we have in vector spaces. Okay? This thing is called free. Moduli, free module. Okay, people forget about this modulus, free module. And from this bad teaching of linear algebra at the beginning, students keep in mind that all modules are like this. Now we came to, the, to an example where module is not like this. Now, how can it be that module is not like this? Let us take an element and let us multiply it. And let us multiply it again, etc. Don't we get the full algebra A this way? And the answer is we get it only if this A is not just an algebra, but a field, namely where all non-zero elements are invertible. And here we have non-zero elements that are not invertible. That's why the module that we get, the module of differentiations is not free. So, if you happen to come from mathematical school in Russia or maybe from some analog in other countries, they teach you a lot about uh, integer numbers. And then there, you know that. That z over z2 form a moduli over z. So you can multiply elements of this coset by any integer. But the fact that you can multiply over z does not mean that it is free because you cannot invert elements from the z 
because it's just a ring. But that's what they teach you at school. And when you go to university, they, te they are telling you, ah, oh, these integers at school, just forget it. It was just for Olympics, just uh, for fun. And they are teaching mathematics, forgetting this. And not giving uh, definition of uh, commutative algebra, I mean, basic. And modules. And it's a pity. So I'm not criticizing you, my dear audience. I am criticizing professors, but not professors who were teaching you because they were teaching you according to the program. I am criticizing the outdated professors who are writing these programs. Okay? They have a great opportunity to teach you commutative algebra at the very beginning, but they are not doing it. Okay? So mostly I am criticizing deans of mathematical departments. Okay. You can tell it to your dean and he could come and discuss with me how to teach as a first year, how to teach linear algebra. Okay, I'm a bit angry on them. So you are victims. If you have problems here, it's because you are victims of a wrong educational system. Okay. So we discussed a bit about modules. We constructed these derivations. And uh, now it's time to make a break. So now we have a five minute break. But before break, let me ask immediate questions. If you don't have immediate questions, then maybe you'll have questions in five minutes. Actually, there is a, there is a logarithmic scale for asking questions. There are questions that you are asking. One group of questions you are asking in one minute, another group of questions in five or 10 minutes, another in two hours, another in one day, in one year, in 10 years. But if you'll have a question in 10 years, I cannot guarantee that I would be able to respond it due to life limitations, okay? So five minutes break. To write textbooks. Mostly they are involved in active research. Okay, so first university that will teach not commutative but super commutative algebra would, I don't know, would get a prize of being innovative university. So let us see what could be the generalization of the notion of derivative. It's 
in supercommutative case. Let me remind you that in supercommutative case, an algebra A is Z2 graded. That means that A equals to A even plus A odd, and this plus is as linear spaces. And multiplication is such that A even times B even is of course B even times A even. A even times B odd is, and also this equals and say M is even. A even times B odd is B odd A even, and this is odd. And A odd times B odd equals minus B odd A odd. And this element is even. Or equivalently. A times B equals minus one to the parity A times parity B multiplying is by B times A. Where P is parity is called M parity of A even is zero parity of A odd is one and also parity of A times B equals parity of A plus parity of B mod two. So I gave you two equivalent definitions. You may use the one that, that you like, okay? So now, I'll define derivations. Derivation would be a map from A to itself. Linear, okay? Uh, 
there would be D even that map A even to A even and A odd to A odd and also D odd that may map A even to A odd, A odd to A even. So these would be later called even derivations, and these would be later called odd derivations. Derivations have parity. So parity of the of derivation even is zero, parity of derivation odd is one. And now the only axiom is D A B equals to D A times B plus minus one. What parity of D, parity of A, A, D, B. So mnemonically, it means that I am somehow moving this D around A. And that's why I get this sign. Okay. Let us consider examples. Consider the following algebra. That sometimes people call algebra of skew polynomials. or external algebra. These two names come because of different intuition that people have. Actually, it means that it consists of, it's spent by monomials on theta. That is uh, anti-symmetric if we interchange them. With this example, C of theta one, theta two is a span of complex numbers. Okay, so I will put here one, theta one, theta two, and theta one. Theta two.
and I assume here I assume that theta i theta j equals minus one theta j theta i. So this was first discovered by Grassmann in the middle of the 19th century. Let me remind you from this, you automatically get the theta i squares to zero. I think it's clear how to, how to multiply elements here. You just multiply, and if you have two thetas, it is zero. If you have theta two, theta one, like theta two, theta one equals just minus theta one, theta two. So, so this is a super commutative algebra. Let me ask, let me ask you, what is what is the a even of this algebra? It is span of what? Hmm? Who will answer? Of one hmm? and uh, the product of theta one and theta two. Thank you, Tim. And what is a odd? What? And now I'm waiting for reply from Chinese side. Mm. Theta one Come and on. theta two. Very good. Great. Now it's time to find derivations. So, Dong Yang, you, Dong Hang, sorry, you are great in finding derivations. Could you tell me what are the derivations here? Could you tell me what are the even derivations? Maybe Tim could say. Well, let I us guess find it be a, a linear combination of uh, thetas. Okay, so first of all, d even on one should be what? No, zero by the previous arguments. Great. Then d even on theta one, what would it be? It should be linear com combination of one and theta. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Uh, theta one and theta two. Okay, great. Alpha theta one plus beta theta two. Mm -hmm. And what could we say about d even on theta one, theta two? Could we? So what? So what could it be? It should a be something even. A even. So it, it, it should be an even. What could it be? Any element of a even. No, uh, yeah, I, you see, when, when we describe derivations, we, de we de describe them on the basic elements. So what would be d even of theta one, theta two? From this formula. Alpha, theta one, theta two. So? The, the beta term is zero and Ah, we cannot do it yet. 
because we have not described the D even on theta two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just prescribe. So D even on theta two. Let me call it alpha, beta, gamma, theta one plus delta, theta two. Now, what is the even on theta one, theta two? So who would start? It's alpha, theta one, theta two. Minus theta two, now. and then and then plus a pass because yes. uh, yeah. yeah gamma theta yeah. one plus delta theta two. So what is it? Alpha plus. Delta, theta one, theta two. Yes, so it's, and here we have zero, and here what would we, and what do we have here? Hmm? Delta. Plus delta theta one, theta two. Let me check. With the sign plus, yes. Isn't it interesting? <clears throat> so this is alpha plus delta, theta one, theta two. If we consider this as a matrix, what is alpha plus delta? Trace. Trace. So you may think why trace appears here. Is it coincidence? You see? You may think about it and consider other examples. But at the moment, uh, if we multiply we those things, uh, what? if we multiply those two lines, uh, we get the determinant of this matrix times theta one, theta two. Uh, and well, the well, trace well, is connected with the derivative of the determinant. determinant. Hmm. Yes, but but uh, trace is connected to with the derivative of the determinant, and derivation being a vector field is connected to diffeomorphism. Okay, so as a homework, you might try to rethink why it happens. So I assume that you know that uh, that if you have not derivation but a linear map, a map, then okay. Let me let me give you a hint. Anyway, it's in the program. So suppose 
I have the I have this external algebra. And now I'll have not derivation, but the full linear map L. That takes theta i into L i j theta j. Then I have, I can induce the action on the full algebra according to the rule, not Leibniz, but old Leibniz. So that, that is something that we will call diffeomorphism that we described, yes? So, so, so there are some maps that preserve multiplication. You see? So it is not about, it's not the Leibniz rule. It's the full diffeomorphism. Now, Consider L applied to theta one, theta D. It would be some number. Right? And this number is called determinant. And this is the mathematical definition of what determinant is. You are not talking about matrices and permutations. All these permutations are hidden in the definition of the algebra. You just know that uh, linear map preserve degree in thetas. And you also know that there is only one element of the top degree in thetas. It is this product. And that's why the action of L should be multiplication by a number. And this number is determinant. Now, you may think, how diffeomorphisms are connected with vector fields? In smooth geometry, we say that vector field could be exponentiated to diffeomorphism. So how do we do it in smooth geometry? No. We can we calculate integral curves. And do something else. But it is smooth geometry. So in this case, is this trace some, some kind of lead derivative? Uh, so, so from the linear algebra, we know, at least you should know, the formula. So it doesn't matter how they were teaching you. The determinants uh, 
The determinant of one plus TL is one plus what? Plus T times trace of L plus O of T squared. Do you know this formula? So, Tim, you know it, yes? Don Hong, do you know this formula? Yeah, yes. Okay. So, we know what determinant is. So, now you may try to guess why trace appeared here. So, so that I guess the even derivation is infinitesimal uh, automorphism of the great or endomorphism of the yes algebra. yes so this is the meaning of uh, thank you you see it's good if you know but if you know something It's not because of me, it's because of other professors. But if you realize something during my talk, so uh, it is evaluation of my work. I really want you not to memorize things. I really want you to understand something new during my talk. So. So, e to the d of d even seems to be automorphism of the algebra. Especially when uh, the super algebra is finite dimensional. Okay. So I think I gave you enough hints to understand why do we have a trace here? Okay. So here we have the first exercise in uh, derivations. Now, it's interesting that there are not only even derivations, but also odd derivations. You see, we started with this example. Now, what can we say about odd? What should we write here? Hmm? Hmm. 
probably both of them should be some elements of uh, A even. Yes. But so it's uh, like now, alpha. now we have a very definite algebra. One, theta one, theta two. So what we can write here? Alpha plus beta times theta one, theta two. Great. What we can write here? Similarly, yes? Yeah. So while we are writing this, let me ask you, is, is what I am telling you simple? Okay. Is it simple? Is it doable? Yes. Okay, so now let us compute what would be this d odd applied to theta one, theta two. Alpha plus beta theta one theta two times theta two plus theta one times gamma plus delta theta one theta two. All right. Why plus? Shouldn't it be minus? So you are right, it should be minus. So it's alpha theta two minus gamma theta one. So here, I cannot play these, ni these nice games about determinants, okay? However, here I can, ah, here I want to tell you, that I forgot to tell you one thing about derivations. Okay, that was very general. It was my mistake. Please forgive me. Mm. Let, me let me do it in an opposite way. Please tell me what fundamental fact about derivations I should tell you that I forgot to tell. So I told you that derivations for a, for a module over an algebra, it's okay. But what is so important about derivations? That we know in the smooth case, and we have to check in the abstract case. And I forgot to tell you about. Maybe that the commutator of two derivations is also a derivation. Great. Great. Yes. So 
I forgot to tell you this fundamental fact. That when you have a derivation of the algebra, two derivations, then d2, d1 minus d1, d2 is again a derivation. Who was the first man who, re who realized it? What was his name? At least what was his family name? Okay, his first name was Sophus. No, that's Lee. Yes. It is how Sophus Lee came to the notion of Lie algebra. He was studying vector fields. So let us get an algebraic proof of this statement. Let us compute this. Now I apply the two. With this kind of lengthy calculation. It has a lot of terms. And what do we see here? We see that here we do have Leibniz rule. But here are terms that it's not what we want. Right now, what if we interchange one and two and take it with minus sign? Do you see that these terms cancel? Okay. At least I see that uh, Tim nods his head. So Dong, Dong Han, yeah, the show term. himself. So he has and to say term. something. Yeah. Yes, they cancel. So it is a purely algebraic fact. Okay. So there is a new operation, anti-symmetric, discovered by Lee. By the way, have you heard about Jacobi identities? Yes. So, so once again, Tim, who is not afraid to show up, nods 
and Don Hank has to say that he heard about Jacobi identities. Of course. Of course. So, so uh, can we can we prove it from this? So, so how to get that this operation satisfies Jacobi identity? Any commutator automatically satisfy the Jacobi yes. identity? Yes, but so so any you are right. Any anti commutator uh, of operators due to associativity satisfy Jacobi identity. Yes. Yes. So it means several things. First, that, that even differentiation form Lee algebra, but now we have odd things. So we automatically come to the notion of the super Lee algebra or super algebra Lee. So when I'm explaining it like this, you may think, how could it be that super algebras Super, super Lie algebras were discovered only in the uh, 60s. Why is it Who so old? What? Who discovered that this? Who, I, I, I think it was Berezian, but uh, because Berezian started to think, Berezian started to follow Grassmann. So uh, if you look at uh, Bourbaki, they are not they are not studying supercommutative algebras. It's interesting. They had a lot of external algebras, in their constructions. I mean the French homological algebra, but uh, somehow, Somehow they missed it. I don't know. So they actually, Bourbaki group, actually missed super algebra. So it was Berezian who followed Grassmann, who was a Frenchman, by the way. And uh, discovered it. So I think that in this way presenting things, it's obvious, okay? It's obvious that you could not study one without another. These things are very close and uh, very natural, okay? So if you have Super algebra as a replacement of the algebra of function, then you have uh, super algebra Lee of uh, super differentiations, and of course you you put proper uh, you put you put minus signs at proper places, right? Oh, it's a time for the break. So let so I hope that I'm not going too fast. Maybe I'm going too slow, but I actually I'm trying to keep the audience. So what I actually don't like, I I, I actually see two active participants, like Tim who represents West, and Dong Han, 
who represents East, while other people are passive. I don't, uh, I don't uh, see them, I don't hear them. Maybe they are robots, but if they are robots, they are outdated robots. Now, in order to imitate your presence, you need to have a robot with artificial intelligence that says something sporadically, asks questions, you know. It's a technology. Okay. Okay. Do you have questions, comments, immediate questions, comments, etc.? So, so what was the inter interpretation of the odd dur duration? Ah. We will come to this. It's a good question. We will come to this uh, in five minutes. And actually, I would like to tell you that there are uh, questions. What is the proper interpretation? OK? So I consider this issue as uh, being semi-open. And I'll explain it as a later, okay? Okay. But uh, was it understandable? Tim, thank you. Is, how do you think, Tim, is the speed proper? Or I should go fast? Or slower, yeah, a little bit faster. But so please excuse me, I'm going this slow, I'm trying to keep the audience. But uh, I hear your comment, I hear your comment. So please excuse me for being too slow, okay? You know that I can go faster, but I don't want to go faster. Sorry. Actually, I'm telling uh, rather deep things that you could not read in a standard textbook. So that's why I want, uh, that's, so I am uh, keeping the speed so you could have time, not just to multiply two monomials, but to think what, what actually is going on. Okay. So let us have a five minute break. So several interesting issues. And, and we see that at the moment, we came to the notion super algebraically together with the notion of algebraically, right? And of course,
you will see that in super algebra Lee, you have super commutator. That is D one supercommutator D two is what is D one D two minus and here we have this correction parity of D one parity of D two. D two D one. Okay. Well, and now let me tell you, let me tell you something interesting. Namely, here we have, interestingly, homological algebra. As a particular case, of super algebra. So nobody treats it like this. What is interesting here is that if field, if, uh, there, if super derivations, D1 and D2 are odd, okay? Let me put here odd. Then the sign here is actually minus one, minus is plus. And therefore, so this is called anti commutator. And therefore, it is interesting to consider a single derivation that is odd. Single odd derivation. Let, let me call it D odd. And it's anti commutator with itself. You see, it's even counterpart, it's trivial. That's why we never saw it before in the conventional commutative algebra and geometry. And here, we have an interesting thing. This equals some D tilde even, okay? And do you know how this algebra is called in uh, modern physics? It is known as supersymmetry. As great Sophus Lee mentioned, 
we may consider not all vector fields, but we may consider vector fields that preserve something. Okay. So now I'm coming back to focus Lee theorem. So this Lee considered subalgebra of derivation preserving preserving something. Okay. You may ask, what does it mean, derivations preserving something? You may consider D that preserves A naught. So may I ask you to interpret this in geometrical term? What does it mean that D applied to A naught is zero if A naught is a function? So on algebraic side, it's clear. Vector field preserves function. But uh, functions correspond to geometrical objects. Okay, so, so for advanced group of the audience, you may think you may think, what does it mean? What I would like to mention is that if D preserves A naught, then the commutator also preserves a naught. That's why Sophus Lee, when he described discovered his algebra, was actually thinking not about abstract algebra. He was thinking about algebra of symmetries. Okay. So he just abstracted the notion from algebra of symmetries. He abstracted the notion of Lie algebra. And of course, he applied it to theoretical mechanics. But we will come to this in, on the physics hall. OK, so preserving something. And, and now I need to tell you in advance that here we have, we get it from nothing, from abstract mathematics, the super algebra of symmetries. And this super algebra of symmetries is realized in models of theoretical physics in the concept of supersymmetry. This, went, this was understood by Russian physicists Golfand and Lichtman. So actually, the person who discovered supersymmetry was Golfand. And Lichtman was his uh, student. Okay. Now we already see that 
we have uh, we have an interesting algebra, interesting super algebra. And now let me consider a particular case of this. Imagine that this d tilde equals to zero, suppose. So then we are coming to the very fundamental notion of d odd such that it squares to zero is called homological vector field. You may ask why this why we calling this vector field homological? What it has to do with homology? Hmm? And the answer is that people found interesting examples of this d odd that squares to zero in different uh, fields in mathematics. And they called not this, but particular cases, homological algebra. So I'm telling you something deep. Namely, I'm telling you that homological algebra, that is uh, the greatest discovery of uh, French mathematical school in the middle of the last century, from this point of view, should be considered as a particular case, okay? So now let us see what is what people call homological algebra, okay? Homological algebra comes as follows. Suppose you have D odd that is linear. in some coordinates. When I say, so before, there were no coordinates involved, okay? The only structure was Z2 grading. But here, we say that D odd is linear in some coordinates. So you may ask, what does it mean, linear in some coordinates? It actually means that How to say that the algebra that we study 
is actually say complex numbers and here are some axes that I will call it even coordinates there are thetas that I call odd coordinates and d odd applied to x equals something proportional to theta and d odd apply to theta equals something proportional to x. D I alpha theta alpha D alpha I X I. And then you can tell me, wow, how it could be? The total structure was very nonlinear. There was no notion of coordinates. Moreover, we already studied example where uh, there was not co no coordinates at all. And I am coming back to a system with coordinates. But only if you make such specialization, you will get the notion of homological algebra. Because then you may introduce, in this case, you may introduce the vector space V that is a span of, sorry, span of Xi's theta alphas, okay? And D odd takes V into V. It means that it is linear, okay? And considered as a map from V to V, it is called D. And condition is D square equals to zero. And this is homological algebra. Such space V is called complex. D is called differential. Elements of V such that dV equal to zero are called closed. Elements of V such that V are D of W are called exact. Okay. And the homology of D of the complex V is the space of closed 
factor by exact. So most probably you, know, you have this definition. Okay. I'm pretty sure you did. But I am not sure that you realized that, that this definition is very particular case of the construction that I explained to you. And if you take any book on homological algebra, you would read there that homological algebra is a category whose objects are complexes. So these are pairs VD whose morphisms are linear maps. And being linear maps, so it's a category, yes? And what is important that morphisms have Morphisms are 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 complexes themselves. Do you know why? Do you understand what they why they are complexes? They inherit the structure of differential from the differentials that are acting on each particular complex. Suppose there is a morphism. Now we can add D, we can define. D, let me call it adj. Adj means a joint on M as follows. D edge on M, it should be a morphism applied to V1. Okay, it's better to write it not in a section. Is is just first you do this and then you do this. Okay. So all this complicated science. That is called homological algebra, is only about this category. I may show you a book. I don't know. You may you may open Bur Burbaki if you wish. They had a book called homological algebra. So that's what they are studying. Okay. Now,
how this is related with the new notion of uh, super manifold equipped with uh, homological vector field. So there is another name. is also called Q-manifold. So how this homological algebra is related to the theory of Q-manifold? Homological algebra is not, is just linearization. of the category of Q manifolds. And it's a thing that Bourbaki and Grossendink never realized. So I told you before that Russian school missed homological vector field. French school missed Super manifold structure. Putting things together gives you a modern knowledge. Modern knowledge is the notion of Q manifold. And here, let me consider the main example. Okay? of Q-manifold that was uh, missed by, I think it was missed, yes. It... I will come to geometrical Q-manifolds later, but now let me consider something not very naive, but more interesting. Consider again external algebra theta one theta k. Okay. Let us try to write down D odd explicitly. So we need to write the odd on theta i. So what could we write here? Hmm? Could you dictate me what to write? This has to be even. So, so suppose I don't want to have constants here for some reason. So what should I write? Some f, okay, let me put it, the index up. So f i j one j two theta j one theta j two plus what should I write there? Tim, could you read me? Well, F i, I j1, j2, j3, j4, and the product of four thetas. Plus etc. Good. And then, what is the condition of homologicity? Mm 
Hmm? So could you guess what would be conditions for F with two indices, for F with four indices, etc. First of all, let me call this thing F2 because it is a binary operation. Let me call this F4, etc. So when I consider D square, what types of terms would I get? I would get some structure that is quadratic in F2, right? Let me call it x22, but temporarily. Then I'll have some structure that would involve f2 and f4. Then I will get some structure that would involve F2, F4, F6, and I need to group it with the structure 4, 4. And so on. Okay. So could you guess before compute before computing what is the meaning of x to two? So what is this important quadratic equation that we are getting? from homologicity condition. Uh, Jacobi identity. Oh, don't know. So Tim, do you know this? Do you want to say that you never thought about it? I don't think I have. So, so let, let it be an exercise. Exercise. Compute this, 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 and check that this is Jacobi identity. But now, note that this Jacobi identity do not come alone. There are other operations that satisfy other equations. Hmm? So isn't it interesting that following ideas of Sophus Lee, we are coming not only to Lie algebras, but to some higher structures. And then, let me incorporate here also access.
And I'll call these guys all together by letter C. Okay? So C A. So parity of C A could be either zero or one, of course. Then I will have no restriction on degrees. Okay. Then I'll write D odd on now on C A would be please now. Tim, just tell me what to write. How, how should I start this? F. Sorry. F, A, B, C, B. Plus F A B one B two C B one C B two plus etc. Right? And then I'll have a lot of equations on Fs. Tim, do you know how these equations of, on Fs are called? No. no. Maybe Dong, Dong Han, do you know how these equations on Fs are called? Um, is this? I, I I don't know. Okay, so so these equations are called L infinity algebra. So now I want to ask everybody to make an exercise, namely to compute these equations and try to interpret them. OK? It is interesting. You see, here is some structure that looks deeper deeper than the structure of uh, Lie algebra and maybe even super Lie algebra. And please write me uh, or send me the, the page where you computed and uh, understood this equations. So you have to compute them yourself. You have to think about them. Okay. And uh, after you do this, we will discuss their meaning. Okay. When you get some experience, we will discuss their meaning together. But right now I'm telling you that what happens here is like general covariance versus uh, special covariance of homological algebra. That's how the structure appears. You see, I'm trying to be a mathematician right now. I'm trying to give you only mathematical motivation.
So when two horns of my course would come together, I will add the motivations from physics. But at the moment, I do not expect that you know proper physics. I need to talk a bit about physics. And then you will get also view from theoretical physics on what happens. Right now, what I'm just telling you is that when we go from linear transformation to general transformation, in physics, it's called general relativity. So when you have linear transformation, in physics, it's called special relativity. So homological algebra is a special relativity. Theory of Q-manifolds is a general relativity. And if you think that you can read it in some books, not attending to this course, you are wrong. So please come get novel view on mathematics and physics, ask questions, do homework, Okay, so that's it for today. So now comments, questions. What about homological algebra? Uh, homological I mean, algebra. So conventional homological algebra. It's a linearization, of course. You, you, you should compare two categories. Here you have theory of maps between manifolds or equivalently maps between superalgebras. Not superalgebras, but superalgebras. Then you can consider linearization of it and have map. So derivative is a map of tangent spaces. What you have here is homological algebra. And what you have here is the theory of Q manifolds. So I am just trying to tell you that all this homological algebra is a kind of linearization. Like you know, that okay, still you, 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 you I, I assume that you know something about physics. You know? So when, when I hit a body, I have a vibration. Vibration could be understood as oscillators. Oscillators are governed by the linear algebra. Okay? So all small movements are governed by the linear algebra, the algebra of small fluctuations. But there are more serious motions that are not just linear algebra. So oscillator is a piece of physics. You may ask, is it possible to understand physics if you know only oscillator? I would say I doubt it. If you know physics, you may understand oscillator. You may consider oscillator as an example of physics. 
but you cannot reduce physics to oscillator. Okay. So this is the relation between uh, homological algebra and uh, the theory of Q-manifolds. So, so the tangent space is the space of the, the, the relation? So, so, uh, so, you, so you might see that if you, so you need to do this exercise. If you do this exercise, you will see that the linear term here, this term, is a differential. And then you will try to understand what are the higher terms. So only the first, the linear term is, is homological algebra. Or, okay, only this, or you may try to embed the full thing inside homological algebra, but uh, it would be just a particular case. Um, in some sense, uh, it would be kind of, um, let me try to give you an analogy. So, Another analogy is like this. Suppose uh, you would like to understand manifolds, okay? You may try to understand manifolds by embedding them in C to the end and take all concepts from C to the end. It's called external geometry, but there is also internal geometry. So this is theory of Q manifold is internal geometry. Homological algebra is something like external geometry that is weaker, but easier to understand. In uh, geometry, people first understood external geometry, like sphere in R3. And only later they realized that the proper way to, to, to study is internal geometry. Here the same thing happens. So you see, not only I am trying to tell you that uh, standard point of view on homological algebra and on commutative algebra is outdated. I'm trying to explain it to you in the simplest examples. And that's why I was explaining all this very slowly, okay? You see, structure of this course is not that you can just pick something from one place, go to the internet, pick something from another place, and then somehow put everything together. You cannot do it because the philosophy in mathematics is changing. And you could, could not take something from one philosophy, something from another philosophy, okay? So philosophy, if you wish, of uh, Q manifolds is something that replaces philosophy of commutative algebra and homological algebra. Commutative algebra itself and homological algebra as two separate volumes of Bourbaki are outdated uh, because they are 60 years old, 65 years old. And I'm telling you the new approach. 
And not I'm just speculating. I am just inviting you to see why it is like this. Moreover, if you want to discuss with me, you may, you may attack any arguments, but not in the way that in the book written by great mathematicians, it is said like this. No, we have very definite constructions, definitions, examples. If you find something non-natural here, Please tell me. Okay. Okay. So I just want to say that people like Ansevich, of course, are using it or keeping it in mind. So Ansevich is very lazy to write books. Okay. He is even lazy to write articles himself. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I have to leave. Some, someone waiting for me. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, so, sorry. so please, sorry so, 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 so let us quit. So let us uh, quit, save uh, recordings, and send me the links. Okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Don okay. Frank. And but Thank you. still. Thank you. Uh, but still, maybe there are some questions or comments, or you are also welcome to write me. Okay. We can have a private discussions. Okay. During office, don't hang. We will meet on Saturday, yes? Yes, yes, of course, yes. As a fixed time, okay. Okay, so you okay. Can thank go, you. You can go to more advanced uh, parts, like uh, discussions on BV or like discussions with Don Hank on A Infinity. Yeah. I mean, so that A, A Infinity. Sorry? A, on A Infinity A, and yeah. L Infinity. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we will continue with you. Okay. You have okay. to go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. See you. So, any questions? I really wanted to surprise you. So, team, so did I surprise you? Honestly. Well, the part about the different differential being uh, well, connected with this odd derivation. Yeah, I didn't expect that. Okay. Do you know that, that uh, the title of the course is Ideas and Surprises? So I actually wanted to have some surprises. So actually, I promise from now, I promise to keep at least one surprise during the talk. And if it will happen that I will not surprise, then it will be my death. It means that next time I will need to give you two surprises. Okay? So number of surprises should be at least higher than the number of talks. Okay? But you know, I always have ideas. So, so, so have you heard new ideas? I mean, ideas that are new to you. Yes. So I fulfill my obligations. You know, I promised ideas and surprises. I am giving them. Yes, and I also promised simple examples. Were examples simple enough? Yes. Okay. That's it. See you next time. Mm -hmm. I'll write you different kind of letters with references, extra literature, etc. Okay. Goodbye.